All right, this is my death video. Why on earth, that cybersecurity guy, are you making a death video? <laughs> well, I got a lot of experience with death because everybody I know is pretty much dead uh, or new, let's just say. But anyway, so I, I did want to get into a story and this is, it's about my, my uh, crazy mother. And, uh, and, and so, but I hope that, you know, if you're a parent, uh, you know, this relates to everyone. Now, one of the things you don't want to burden your family with or your kids is leaving a bunch of uh, things for them to take care of upon your, uh, your demise. So, for example, you know, my mom, when I cleaned out her office, looking at all the paperwork to see if there was anything that was important. And by the way, in there, I found an insurance policy worth about $20,000. But I had to throw out eight 32-gallon trash bags of, of just uh, old bills, uh, correspondence, uh, letters, uh, Christmas cards. I mean, she, she had hoarded everything into closets in boxes upon boxes. And it was down in one of those boxes that I found that insurance policy. So it was well worth my time, but good God, imagine how much time it took me. I think I went at it for weeks just on that project alone. And then, uh, you know, another example is if you have valuables in the house uh, and you're getting old and you know that, you know, well, she didn't even want to live much longer. Get rid of the stuff of value. For example, uh, when I fell down the stairs and broke my neck, the fire sale happened that week. All of mom's jewelry, probably about thirty to fifty thousand dollars worth of jewelry, disappeared. Just went up in smoke because uh, she, the, the cleaning lady, got half of the estate, and she wasn't even there for the fire sale. So, you know, now do you care? You know, you're dead, right? <laughs> I mean, what, what, what the hell? You, you know, uh, do you care what happens to your jewelry? Well, no, yes and no. I mean, I can imagine me being up in, in hopefully heaven, uh, looking down and thinking, my God. I never, you know, I never wanted that to happen to my belongings, you know, especially, you know, some of the cherished stuff. Mom kept, a, for example, she kept all of the, uh, the family history. There were VCR tapes of old Christmases and everything. All that went in the dumpster. All the pictures, all the family history went in the dumpster while I was in the hospital during the fire sale. So all of my family history has been completely erased. Now, I begged my batshit crazy mother to, to use Legacy Box. To, to put a lot of digitize a lot of that and I was going to send it to the few remaining relatives that don't really care about it but you know at least then they you know it's just a file on the computer or files uh, for them to, to keep or not keep but it would have it would have at least been preserved that way instead of going in into a, a dumpster fire not only that she had antiques worth thousands upon thousands of dollars all of that disappeared while I was in the hospital. The cleaning lady and the, the crook that we hired to sell everything uh, stole it all. So, you know, what I'm telling you is you don't leave your family. The other thing is your funeral arrangements. You know, mom, she had provided a plot in the cemetery where she was to be buried near my father, for example. And, uh, but that was it. I thought she had, and she told me what funeral home she wanted to handle the arrangements. So when I got to the funeral home, I said, well, I, uh, you know, how, how does this work? And they said, well, how does what work? I said, well, you know, mom's obviously, you know, she's got a plot in the cemetery. Uh, and I, I assume she, she's paid you. No, she hadn't paid us anything. She hadn't provided for her funeral arrangements at all. She hadn't even picked out, she wanted to be cremated. She hadn't even picked out the urn that she was to be buried in. So all of these things fell to me to figure all this stuff out. And of course, you know, it cost $7,000. I had to pay the funeral home. And then she had some written up some words that she wanted said at her funeral, and I gave it to her, her, uh, uh, I don't know what you want to call, priestess. It's a woman a pastor, a female pastor that runs her, runs her church. And I gave her those words. Now, the funeral happened while I was in the hospital, and I, I did watch the, uh, the video of the funeral, and I gave that pastor all of the words that my mom wanted said at her funeral. And the one thing she did not want said is, Whoa, though I walk through the shadow of death, I share food no evil. That was what the pastor started with. And all the things I gave the pastor to say at my mom's funeral never even got said. So why am I telling you all of this? So the first thing I'm telling you is, go around, don't burden your kids with all your crap. 
go ahead and clean your house out right now especially if you've got cancer or you have are facing some sort of medical problem and you might die within the next year or so you know make sure that you know you've you spelled out in your finances where everything's going to go uh you know for me example I had, I had to legally hire a lawyer and everything that I have goes to my foundation, my charitable foundation, which is going to go to uh, improve the parks around my community here in Ocala, Florida. So that, you know, so make sure that that's all lined up. And, uh, you know, I'll give you an example on that. So I, uh, I went into my whole life policy, uh, whole life insurance, because my wife had divorced me while I was in the hospital. And uh, I took her name off of the policy. And, uh, it, you know, but I didn't know who I was going to make the beneficiary. At that time, I didn't have my foundation set up. And so I was going to make the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, uh, but I couldn't, um, you have to specify certain information. And I couldn't get, like, their tax ID. I called them up, and, uh, and they were just like, well, you know, we don't know. I finally, you know, I just left it blank. Well, if you leave it blank, it reverted back to making my ex-wife the full beneficiary for my life insurance. Now, if I had died from that broken neck, do you think I wouldn't have been up in heaven going, oh, hell no, I don't want her getting a dime, man. I don't want her getting a dime. Oh, all that money from that life insurance policy going to my ex-wife. Holy moly. I probably would have been kicked out of heaven because I would have been so upset. You know, they'd been, oh, you know what? You're too angry up here in heaven. <laughs> you need to go to hell for a while, you know. I could see that happening right now. So that's, a, that's another thing about the death video. Uh, so make sure you know, you've got your, your will, uh, you know, all of that stuff through a lawyer. Okay, I know you can go up online and just do a simple will or something. No, I, my lawyer is gonna take care of everything. And then of course I worked with the funeral home. So now what do you gotta get to the funeral home? Well, of course I had to specify the cemetery that I wanted to be buried in. I also provided money so that I will get a military funeral. Uh, there will be an honor guard there. That might be the only people at my funeral. Because <laughs> you know, I, I don't, not too many people are going to drive down from Virginia to watch me get buried. I can guarantee that. Uh, and I don't really know that many people that are still alive. But anyway, so I did provide for that. But I was, while I was on this trip, I started writing my obituary. Because you know what? You don't know what they're going to put in your obituary. I read my, uh, for an example, I went back and I read... My, uh, my mother's obituary, because uh, she hadn't written one. It was terrible, you know, because the funeral home, all they did was they went out and they just did the minimal amount of research and it just said she attended this college, uh, uh, her loving husband, which she hated him, she tortured my father, you know, she's preceded by this and, uh, and uh, these people are still surviving in the family and that's about all it said. You know, no, no accomplishments, no nothing. You know, no, uh, no, that she was valedictorian of her college. None of that was in the obituary. So you need to write your own obituary. Number one, pay the funeral home for your funeral. Make sure that's paid up front. Give them the obituary. They also need a picture of you so that you can have a picture of yourself with the, uh, when they post the obituary online. And then uh, the last thing that I'm gonna do is I want a death, I'm calling it a death video. And I've got a bunch of music picked out that I want played at my funeral, you know, before and after the ceremony. And, uh, and then also I'll be, uh, I'm gonna point out uh, videos where I tell stories about myself. And that'll all be playing before and after the funeral. Uh, and I, I don't have a, a wake plan, but you see, these are all the things that you need to think about uh, for, for, you know, your demise. Now, I understand you may be just kicking around, you're going to work and everything. These are morbid topics to think about, but I had to do it because there's nobody left for me. You know, my, I'm divorced. Everybody I know is dead. So nobody would take care of these things except my lawyer. And uh, I paid him handsomely and he will get paid handsomely out of the estate to take care of everything. So just wanted to make a quick uh, death video for you of things. And if I think of more things that you want to think about the main thing is, is don't leave anything to, to other people you know get it all done yourself and that way you know things will just go right along they and even then it's still hard on them you know it's still hard on the people that that you leave behind you know if it's your wife or your husband or your kids you know uh they, they still got a lot to deal with even but i've given you all the things that you can deal with up front so at least they don't have to deal with those things 
right? All right, peace out, stay free. Okay, another example for the death video was, uh, you know, look around and things that you, you can't use no more. For example, my mother, the last three years of her life, she couldn't drive, but she wanted to keep her car. You know, it was, it was a mental thing, you know, but she knew that once that car was gone, she was admitting that, you know, her ability to drive around was, was gone. Even though when I finally got to the car, it had uh, two flat tires, the battery was dead, and it had beehives in the car <laughs> that had moved in and made nests in there. It was full of bees. So I, you know, it took me a long time to clean that car up. And I actually got about 6,000 for the car, which I of course gave to her, uh, you know, but I, this is just another example of things that as you get older or sick or whatever, that you know need to be taken care of and get them done up front. Because if, I, if that car had still been there, when I was in the hospital with my broken neck, I guarantee you somebody would have just given them a thousand dollars for that car, and uh, and just walked away with the. It was really worth about six to ten thousand, you know, once it was cleaned up and a new battery and, uh, uh, you know, the tires had been pumped up and everything and cleaned up really nice. I mean, the car was still in fantastic shape. It just had been neglected. You know, you neglect anything for years and years, uh, it's going to go to hell and it's going to look like it's gone to hell in a handbasket, but it just takes. It takes a good, uh, you know, month or so to, to put it all back together. And then, you know, look at that, 6,000 for the car. Not bad. So I'm just giving you another example of, of death. All right, things that, that you want to take care of. Get rid of that jewelry. You don't need it no more. You know, my mom for the last three or four years of her life never left the house. So what does she need the jewelry for? You know, go ahead and sell it. I kept telling her, you know, and, and of course she really needed to move into assisted living. That's another thing. Don't don't burden your family by living in the house with, you know, everybody trying to take care of you. Make sure that you've made arrangements to get yourself into some sort of assisted living facility where they can take care of you. You know, I might not have an estate by the time I'm dying because I will move. If I get too bad off, I'm going to move into assisted living and that's going to chew right through my estate in a hurry uh, to, to get to, you know, just take care of me. Uh, you know, you never know. But look at that. I mean, I fell down the stairs and broke my neck. I should have died according to the doctor or been paralyzed. And, uh, you know, so I could have, that could have been it. That, you know, boom. One and done, right? Just saying. Death video. The death video. Another thing I wanted to add to the death video is, uh, you know, you're not getting any younger. And you need to take care of these things while your, your mental faculties are about you. I hate to say it. Old people are easy marks. My mom was an easy mark. The cleaning lady moved in, warped her brain as she got dementia and got her, worked her way into the well and ended up taking half the estate. You know, my mom didn't, she was out of her mind. She didn't know what was going on. So these are the things that could happen to you or your parents. All right, so if you take care of all these things now ahead of time, you know, I, I, I dare say that as you lose your mind or you have dementia or Alzheimer's or whatever happens to you, that uh, you probably won't go back and change things. You know, you'll just say, okay, yeah, I took care of all that and it's set up the way that I want it. And uh, I did that, you know, years ago and I don't need to address it again. And, it, you know, and of course then also you got to keep it up to date. You know, I had uh, my original will, I had given a bunch of stuff to my best friend. I had designated uh, certain people to receive certain things that were of value to me. Well, my best friend's dead. <laughs> I mean, that well, that, you know, so what would have happened to that stuff? It would have gone someplace else. So, you know, I would say visit your will about every couple years and, and read it and say, okay, uh, I was given stuff to, to my, my best friend, uh, Schmo, and I, I, he's no longer my best friend or he's dead now, or he's in the hospital with uh, Alzheimer's and uh, he can't use all that camping equipment. I need to do something else with it. So just wanted to add a little bit to the death video for things that you need to think about and do at a young age. You know, don't wait till you get old where there's criminals. Everybody's a criminal. Everybody wants your money. They want your retirement. They want your, your uh, pension. Uh, a lot of people are gonna lose their pensions in the coming uh, financial crisis. You know, there's a, the, the world is just full of criminals. So you have to take care of it while you're of sound mind and body right now before the world can take advantage of you and your estate and your family. And I had uh, one more tip on the death video. 
you know, you're going to look around uh, like my, my buddy up in, uh, well, up in up north. I, I was in his garage. <laughs> I was like, it looks worse than my garage. <laughs> I was like, holy moly. <laughs> I mean, my garage is, uh, it's just, it, well, I could, I could get my garage pretty much squared away within a, a week or so, you know. I mean, I, I got stuff strewn about from various projects laying on my countertops and on the floor, and especially now that I brought a bunch of stuff back from my mom's estate, or the last of my mom's estate, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with a couple of lamps and, you know, some old pictures and stuff. But anyway, what I'm saying is it's going to be overwhelming, all right? And what you got to do is what I did when I moved from Michigan to Florida. I went from... 2,800 square feet of stuff. My wife was a hoarder, my ex-wife. And uh, I mean, and, and of course, and a basement, which is not included in that square footage. And that basement was full from one end to the other to move into a 1,711 square foot, one floor house here in Florida. Now to do that, what I did is I took every single day. My motto was every day, something's gotta go. I either sold it or you know or I uh, threw it away or I uh, recycled it or I gave it to charity and every single day I would come home I would spend well at, at that time I was home anyway I, that was when I had cancer and every single day I would look around and I'd say all right I'm gonna get at least one more box you know and every day I made a trip I mean that charity that uh, Salvation Army they got to know me they were like, damn, you're back again? I said, yeah, yeah, every day, every day. You know, my wife, for example, had, uh, I, I want to say it was 100 to 500 pairs of shoes. She was a shoe freak. And, uh, and, and she, she actually parted ways with the, most of those shoes. I was, I was surprised. So a lot of those went to charity. She had an entire room full of clothes. And she whittled those down. So, you know, it's, it's a progress. But just take it one day at a time. It might take you a whole year. It took me a whole year. Peace out. Stay free. If you wish to follow me other places, I post on many topics. My main interest is geopolitics. To follow me for geopolitics, I am that cybersecurity guy on YouTube. Under the playlist, Watching the World Burn. On Rumble, my channel is simply The Burn. I also post all my videos on X. That handle is That Cybersec Guy. That Cyber SEC Guy. I'm also on Getter and True Social. On Getter, it's the same as X. That CyberSec guy, and on True Social, it is that cybersecurity guy. I also do minimal postings on Telegram at The World Burning. The World Burning on Telegram. I'm limited to two gigabytes there, so I don't post often unless it's a short video. I also do videos on outdoor activity because I'm into of hiking mainly. But it's Outdoors with Kirk on Rumble. That is my main channel for outdoor activity. But I also have a playlist on YouTube called Hiking, Biking, and Camping in the United States. Lastly, I do reviews and tutorials and commentary on various products. On Rumble, it is just simply that cybersecurity guy. That's my catch-all for any video that doesn't fit in geopolitics or outdoors. On YouTube, it is reviews, tutorials, and commentary on products. Hope you can follow me other places. Peace out. Stay free.